morning, St. Luther. Uh, once again, we are blessed that uh, God, out of his goodness, his grace, and his mercy, has allowed each and every one of us to rise again to see a brand new day. And for that, as always, uh, we thank him, give him praise and honor. And again, this morning, um, uh, we are coming to the close of our unit study, uh, unit three, the call of women. And our adult, uh, young adult topic uh, for today is showing generous hospitality. Our general lesson title is called Lydia, Call to Serve. And our background scripture, as well as our print passage, uh, is found in Acts, the 16th chapter, the 11th through the 15th verse, the 40th verse. And we move to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 26th through the 30th verse. And uh, like we've mentioned over the past uh, several Sundays as we have uh, studied the call of women in the ministry, we see how, how God has utilized them in all different capacities. We see how even in the journey of of Christ's mission, how they were there to the very end. They were there for uh, the crucifixion. They were there for the burial. And they were even there for the resurrection, for we know that uh, it was a woman that Christ revealed himself to first and gave the call to inform the disciples of his resurrection. So there is no doubt how great a role uh, that God has utilized women uh, in the ministry. And so as we conclude this study, uh, we meet uh, a young lady uh, today by the name of Lydia. And uh, one thing that we need to also mention uh, as we get into this lesson is that uh, not only uh, is God highlighting the role of women, but he is also highlighting how the principles of how this world operate are so very different uh, from the principles of God and of his kingdom. So as we get into our study today, uh, we come to find uh, the prophet Paul, who has uh, had a, a vision of a man in Macedonia who is calling out to him for help, asking him to, to come to Macedonia. And Paul is so uh, moved uh, by this vision that he leaves immediately. And it is here where we pick up uh, in our lesson print. And so I'm going to reiterate what drives uh, Paul to uh, Macedonia. And this is in the, the ninth and the 10th verse of Acts, the 16th chapter. It says, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision immediately, we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. And we know that when, when God calls, uh, it's our duty to answer, and it's our duty uh, to move immediately. And so Paul did, and as we, we get to our lesson uh, print, um, I'm going to uh, read the uh, 11th through the uh, 12th verse here. It says, therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony. 
and we were in that city abiding certain days. And you know, Paul had uh, established so many uh, communities of faith. And in his journey to Macedonia, he passed through uh, several cities, but you'll notice that he didn't stop uh, to establish anything in those cities for he was focused on the vision and the call for which the Lord had placed upon his heart. So he passed through those cities on his way to Macedonia for this was at uh, the Lord's direction. And as we get to uh, the 13th verse, and I'm going to read uh, the, uh, just the 13th in this, this case, and it says, and on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted there. Uh, I thought it interesting that uh, he had uh, a vision of a man crying out for help. Yet when he arrived in Macedonia and on the Sabbath day, uh, which was uh, his custom where he would have normally gone to the synagogue. But here in Macedonia, we don't find a synagogue. Uh, he makes his way uh, to the riverside where he finds a group of women gathered there. You know, I don't know about you, but the, uh, the question that comes up in my mind uh, is, where are the men? Uh, because the vision was of a man calling out to him. But we have come to, to know in our lesson and in our study that uh, it was customary that in order for a synagogue to be established, that there had to be 10 Jewish men. In order to officially establish a synagogue, maybe this lack of presence of godly men is the reason why there was no synagogue established. Maybe this is why there were only women uh, gathered by the riverside to, to worship and, and, to, and to pray. But to uh, Paul's credit, uh, when he met these women, he began to preach the gospel. You see, it's, it's important to note that uh, unlike some of our customs and traditions and habits of, of today, uh, we sometimes decide when to speak and when not to speak. Sometimes to us it matters where we are. Sometimes to us it matters who's there and who's not there. For Paul might have had the attitude of uh, why would I address these women uh, when there are no men there? But Paul doesn't ask this question. Paul knows that he has been led here to preach the gospel. And so he finds these women and he begins to preach the gospel. And it's here that the lesson uh, make reference to Lydia, who is the, the principal character of our lesson here. And in the 14th and 15th verse, it says, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, Come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And here is where we see, might it have been that uh, Lydia uh, was the target, after all, of God's vision. 
Was it she whom the Lord wanted to receive this word from Paul? For well, we know that Paul was prepared by God in his vision. And the lesson here says that the Lord had prepared Lydia's heart to receive of him. And, and don't we see how wonderful it is that when God prepares us for a mission or a call, that he also prepares the way for those who are to be the recipients of the call. She had a prepared heart to receive the word of God. Now, if we are not obedient to God's call, we are not obedient to God's direction, then we all have a tendency to throw a monkey wrench into the plans of God. But we see here the obedience of Paul. We see here the preparation of God in Lydia's life so that she would receive his word and be baptized. And we know that uh, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And the key word here is that we have to be prepared uh, to move at God's call. We have to be prepared to receive God's word. And so we see the fulfillment of God's plan uh, in the life of Paul and in the life of Lydia. For it is by his word that she receives Jesus Christ and is baptized. And as we have known for so many years that there is no other way that we can be saved except by the word of Jesus Christ. And so Lydia has now received him, and now she has invited Paul into her house. And as the lesson points out, Lydia was a woman of means. She was a woman of resources. The lesson says that she was a, a dealer or a seller of purple linen. And we know that these were expensive items, items that were reserved for the wealthy, items that were reserved for the noble. So she was a woman of means who had the ability to host Paul and all of those who uh, traveled with him. And because of her resources, she was also able to support Paul's ministry. She was also able to facilitate all of the things that he required in his ministry. And this is how God works. This is the blessings of God that come when we are obedient to his call and when we are obedient after we have received his word. And what is not a part uh, of our lesson print as we approach uh, the 40th verse, it says, and they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia and when they had seen the brother and they comforted them and departed. Uh, our lesson print doesn't address the fact that after Paul's uh, time uh, in Philippi, that uh, he upset some. He upset some because he uh, delivered a woman from a spirit that she was possessed with. And this spirit was uh, a moneymaker for some of those in that region. And, and they had Paul in prison. And it is at this time that he uh, is let out of prison that again he makes his way back to Lydia's house. And it shows us how prominent she was in her household in his ministry that he returned there before leaving. And the point that we need to make here is that as Paul departs, and he leaves. Uh, he leaves knowing that in Lydia, he has found a woman of faith. He has found a woman of, of great character, of great resources, one who is no doubt able to carry on what he has established. For she was a woman of faith. She had received the gospel. She was a woman of great means. And so, Paul then departs, having fulfilled uh, the call uh, that God had laid upon his heart. And Lydia is now this prominent figure in Philippi. 
who is left there to carry on uh, what Paul has established. And here we come to uh, a very uh, important part uh, in our lesson as we move to 1 Corinthians. And here God establishes on the heels of how important women have been in the ministry. He begins to, to show to us the differences uh, between the principles of his kingdom and the principles of those things that are in the world that some of us find value in. And so I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians, the uh, first chapter, the 26th through the 30th verse. And he says, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. What is God telling us? Oftentimes in that period, as well as today's period, some might uh, classify women as slightly uh, more insignificant than men, that the ministry uh, requires a man. Uh, but this lesson has proven to us that the men are not required. The only thing that is required is a prepared heart. And a prepared heart whose heart is rooted in the word of God. Uh, these principles uh, often uh, are contrary to the way things are in the world. For in the world, uh, we tend to heap great value on uh, one's political uh, connections. We place great value on one's education. We place great value on one's wealth. But God is telling us that it doesn't matter whether you have a PhD or a GED. That's not important. It doesn't matter uh, what's in your bank account. It doesn't matter about your race. It doesn't matter about your sex. It doesn't matter about your past. It doesn't matter about your history. The only thing that matters is a prepared heart a heart that is prepared to receive the word of God and a heart that is prepared to answer the call when it is given. It does not matter about your role. It doesn't matter about your position for in the kingdom of God, they are all important. God has given us varying gifts and all gifts are to be used for the edification of the body of Christ. Doesn't matter what it is, what the position. The world may heap certain values on things, but God is not a respecter of persons. Woman or man, boy or girl, black or white. The only thing that is required, the only thing that qualifies us is our acceptance and obedience to the word of God. And so God is looking for true worshipers. And if we are to be a true worshiper, then we need to know him whom we are worshiping. And there is only one way that that can come about. And that is by 
the word of God. First, in our explanation here, if we look at this very familiar scripture in John, the first chapter, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. What does it say? The word of God is your first priority. Some may think that they can sing themselves into a relationship with God. Some may think they can pray their way into a relationship with God. Some may think they can pay their way in to a relationship with God. Others think if I just be busy and do good deeds, but we go back to our first priority. In the beginning was the word. And so my point here is that before you enter into any ministry, before you enter into any function, you must be a true worshiper. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And in order to be a true worshiper, I must first get to know him. And there's no way that I can get to know him except it be by the word of God. So I'm recommending uh, to you today that if you are not uh, participating in Sunday school where the word of the Lord is going on, I encourage you to do so. If you are not participating in Bible study, I encourage you to do so. For that is your first priority. For in the beginning was the word. And without the word, there's no way that we can establish a true relationship with him. So we just encourage you today to seek your call. Be obedient to your call. Receive your call in spirit and in truth. And there's no other way that we can do that except it be by the word of God. The word is first, last, and always. And we are thankful that just as Lydia received the word today, that is by that same word now, that all men may be saved by the word of God. And we thank God out of his goodness and mercy that he sent his son to die on a cross for our sins. And had it not been for him, had it not been for his love, had it not been for his compassion for us, where would we be? We owe it all to him. We owe it all to him for all the things that he has done. And no one should seek credit for what God has done, for no one could do it. If someone could have done it, he wouldn't have sent his son who was perfect and without sin. So we thank God today. We give him all glory and we give him all honor. And we pray that you lift him up today. And so we thank you this morning for listening to us. And we pray that we will see you again on next time.